Hello, geography students. This is Mrs. Politsky, and I have your notes for Chapter 17, Section 3, Israel. Let's start with the history. This region is sometimes known as the Holy Land because it is the home to sacred sites for three of the world's major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Hebrews, ancestors of the Jews, established the Kingdom of Israel roughly 3,000 years ago, covering much of what is now present-day Israel. Uh, around the year 60 BC, the Roman Empire conquered this region, which they eventually recalled, renamed Palestine. After several revolts, Romans forced Jews to leave this region, and the scattering of the Jewish population is called the Diaspora. This happened roughly around the year AD 60, um, not quite 30 years after the crucifixion of Jesus. Present lands of Israel uh, were once ruled by the Greeks, the Romans, the Byzantines, the Arabs, and the Ottoman Turks. Around the mid-600s, uh, the Arabs conquered Palestine and brought Islam to the region. From the late 1000s to the early 1200s, uh, Christians from Europe launched a series of wars to remove Muslims from the Holy Land called the Crusades. Around the year 1099, the Crusaders captured the city of Jerusalem, but were eventually pushed out of the area, and over time, Palestine became part of the Ottoman Empire. In the late 1800s, Zionist movement uh, began in Europe, primarily in Great Britain, and it was calling for the establishment of a Jewish homeland or community within Palestine. Tens of thousands of Jews from around the world would move to this region, and these people wanted to see a homeland for the Jews established. After World War I, uh, the British took control of Palestine and actually created uh, what is called a mandate. Uh, as a result of the Holocaust of World War II, the Zionist movement came back into light. And in 1947, the United Nations voted to divide Palestine into a Jewish and Arab state. In 1948, the Jewish leaders established the nation of Israel. And Arab and Palestinians opposed this new nation, and they started a series of wars starting in 1948 and really lasting through about 1974. In 1978, there was a peace treaty that was signed between Israel and Egypt that has brought peace between these two nations. And today, uh, there are still some disputes between Israel and other Arab nations, but for the most part, there has been peace between Israel and Egypt. Today, uh, Israel is a, has basically a very large Jewish culture, it's a major part of their life. Jews from all over the world have come to settle in Israel. Matter of fact, if you are born outside of Israel, but you are Jewish and you can prove your, um, your faith, meaning that you have documentations that you are a Jew, you can actually have citizenship within Israel almost immediately. So there are a lot of people that are moving to Israel uh, just because of that. Israel has a democracy in which a prime minister and a parliament called the Knesset uh, form its government. Israeli men and women, um, basically at the age of 18, have to serve at least one year in the military. It's mandatory. Uh, so women, yes, can be drafted in this country. Israel is one of the most industrialist um, nations in the Middle East. Uh, its economy is modern, including agriculture, it has uh, a lot of citrus crops. They also have textile manufacturing, mining and machinery, um, high-tech technology equipment. Uh, tourism is also very vital to Israel's economy. Israel is an urban nation with most of its population living in cities. Israel's largest city is Tel Aviv. Uh, about 80% of the population is Jewish. The rest are mostly Arab, and about three quarters of the Ar Israeli Arabs are Muslim, but there are some Christians. In 1950, the law of return was implemented to encourage Jews to return to settle Israel. And number 15, Israel has two official languages, one being Hebrew and the other being Arabic. Jews recognize the Sabbath, which is actually on Saturday. Uh, this is a holy day. 
the most important Jewish holiday is Yom Kippur, sometimes known as the Day of Atonement, uh, which occurs in the fall. Passover is a spring um, holiday, if you want to call it that. It celebrates the Hebrews' escape from captivity from the Egyptians, and it's celebrated every spring uh, with the, the Seder, or the Passover meal. Number 16, the Jewish culture. In the Jewish culture, there are many laws governing what a person can eat. Uh, the term used to refer to the Jewish dietary laws is known as closure. Uh, foods such as pork and shellfish are forbidden. And if you wanted to read more into this, uh, the book of Leviticus, which is in the Old Testament, uh, there are roughly 613 different rules or laws that govern um, basically how Jews are to live. Uh, remember, the Ten Commandments, yes, these govern their lives as well. Uh, but to be a, uh, a unique people that are apart from the rest, they have to follow all 613 of these laws. All right. A large farm where people share everything in common is known as a kibbutz. Uh, today, there are roughly 100,000 Israeli Jews that live on some 250 uh, kizabums. Anyway, there are these people all share property. They eat their meals together and they also have communal nurseries, uh, certain assigned jobs and also equal partners uh, within the operation. Uh, some of the photos that you see below on the, the middle and the bottom right hand corner are pictures of kibbutz. Palestinian territories. Uh, the Palestinian territories are areas within Israel that are controlled partly by the Palestinian Arabs. Uh, the disputed part of the land in the Palestinian territories is an area known as Gaza or the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, which is a very large region um, right along the Jordan River, and then the eastern part of the city of Jerusalem. Number 20, Gaza is a very small and crowded piece of coastal land along the Mediterranean Sea where more than one million Palestinians live. The West Bank is mostly rural, it has a population of almost 2.5 million people. Tens of thousands of Jews have moved into settlements that are causing tension between Arabs and Israelis. East Jerusalem is claimed by Palestinians as their rightful capital, but Jews also claim Jerusalem as their capital, and many holy sites for the Jews and Muslims and Christians rely in the city of Jerusalem. Israel annexed Eastern or East Jerusalem in 1980, and in 2016, the United States formally recognized Jerusalem as the rightful capital of Israel. For a long, long time, Tel Aviv was actually what we recognized as the capital. Thank you very much.